On December 17, 2010, a 26-year-old street vendor in Tunisia named Mohamed Bouazizi set himself on fire in protest against the corrupt government of Tunisia. His suicidal protest caused people throughout Tunisia to protest against their government for more rights. For years, the Ben Ali regime had been violating several human rights and killed or injured anyone who spoke against him. When the Tunisians began to protest, the government first responded by further suppressing its citizens, by arresting activists and shutting down the internet. But eventually, the Tunisian president, Ben Ali, shuffled the members of his cabinet and offered to create 300,000 jobs to the Tunisian citizens. But unfortunately, he was too late. The protest continued, and on January 14, 2011, Ben Ali and his family were on a plane to Saudi Arabia, ending his 23-year rule over Tunisia. Ben Ali had led a regime of grief and oppression. The freedoms we enjoy in America, like of the press and speech, were not exercised in Tunisia. In response to the protests, Ben Ali promised new legislative elections within six months. However, the Tunisian people had had enough of Ben Ali and his tyranny. In order to eradicate this leader from Tunisia, the Tunisian military formed a joint attack and chased off Ben Ali's security forces. Later that day, Ben Ali resigned the presidency and fled the country by plane. And immediately after he left, Tunisian airspace was closed. While Ben Ali fled, Prime Minister Mohamed Ghannouchi took over briefly as acting president. Saudi Arabia cited exceptional circumstances for their heavily criticized decision to give Ben Ali asylum in Jeddah saying it was also in support of the security and stability of their country. The Saudi decision was not out of sympathy for Ben Ali, who had long fought against Islamists in Tunisia. Saudi Arabia demanded Ben Ali remain out of politics as a condition for accepting him. On the 26th of January 2011, the Tunisian government made an international arrest warrant for Ben Ali accusing him of illegal money laundering and illegally acquiring real estate and other assets. Justice Minister Lazar Karoui Chebi said videos showed that the president stashed cash and jewelry in the president's palace. The gold and jewelry will be redistributed to the people by the government. After Ben Ali fled Tunisia, he and his wife were tried in absentia for his suspected involvement in some of the country's largest businesses during his 23-year-long reign. On the 20th of June 2011, Ben Ali and his wife were sentenced to 35 years in prison after being found guilty of theft and unlawful possession of cash and jewelry. This verdict also included a penalty of about $61 million. Ben Ali censored all social networking sites like Twitter and Facebook. Without the internet, it would be possible for the horrible oppression to happen in silence to the outside world. People were being killed left, right and center by the military for protesting and the regimes always die hard. But when the protests went viral, Facebook became a hub for the protesters to speak out against the government and call for help. But now, the Ben Ali regime is finally over. Tunisians are now beginning to realize that their powerful protesting has begun to show in the formation of what Ghanouchi calls a government towards democracy. Ultimately, in the Arab world, Tunisia became the instigator that started a domino effect on the rest of the countries. The countries who were inspired to protest were numerous. The losses were heavy but the victories were mighty. How would you 
say that Tunisia inspired other countries to step up and act? Okay. Well, Tunisia is interesting because Tunisia is not one of the, you know, if you want traditionally, it's not one of the most influential of Arab countries. Uh, it's in North Africa. Uh, it's uh, as opposed to, you know, this part of the Middle East, which, which has always tended to be more central. Uh, now, I, in the case of Egypt, obviously, it's an exception. Egypt is in North Africa, but Egypt has always played a role in the rest of the Middle East. Following President Hosni Mubarak's resignation in Egypt, Egypt was subject to martial law for some time. Due to the protests, the constitution of Egypt fell and the parliament was dissolved. This resulted in yet another domino effect, which is exemplified many times in the Arab Spring ordeal. The NDP and other organizations and corrupt ministers soon followed in the parliament suit. Also, to gain justice for the people, Mubarak's family and his former ministers were prosecuted. The ever-famous protests in Libya resulted in the imminent downfall of infamous longtime dictator Muammar Gaddafi. He was later killed on October 20, 2011. The United Nations employed military intervention to take control of all Libyan cities in order to keep the peace and formulate some kind of law. This led to the National Interim Council assuming control over Libya. Currently, after all the war and bloodshed that has ensued in Libya, they have found peace and are prospering from the inspiration they gained from the Tunisian protests. Since the Tunisian Revolution, 1,000 new organizations have been created, which would have been unthinkable in the times of Ben Ali. They range from women's rights to human rights groups, all which were devoid of hope in the times of the Ben Ali regime. The civic explosion here in Tunisia stands in stark contrast to other countries touched by the Arab Spring. Dozens of non-governmental operations are under investigation for treason in what Human Rights Watch has called a move by the transitional military government to restrict rights and democracy groups. Tunisia looks well on its way to a vibrant, participatory democracy. People who had never done anything before now all want to invest and play their role as a citizen. Women in Tunisia, Egypt and Libya played a frontline role in bringing down the entrenched dictatorships and now they are eager to take the rewards of full participation in politics in their countries. Tunisia was the first Arab state to abolish polygamy, the first to grant women's professional rights, and it was at the forefront in establishing progressive family laws. But of course, there is still hope for the other countries touched by the Arab Spring. According to BBC, the Tunisian uprising cost the country $2.1 billion. Ganucci claims that they are committed to intensifying their efforts to re-establish calm and peace in Tunisia. The new government of Tunisia is headed by Monsef Marzouki. To the onlooker, he does not seem to be corrupt and is acting in the country's best interest. It would be impossible for the government to try anything. The passion for freedom burns too bright in the Tunisian citizens. Some are happy with Marzouki's government, but some are convinced that the protests haven't changed much. Very little is certain in Tunisia's ever-changing government, but one thing is, the people of Tunisia will not rest until they possess a democratic and fair government, and nothing can ever stop them to achieve their goal.